How's that looking? I tell you what, what a, what a spot for this sort of video. We are in the wonderful West Cumbria, obviously on the coastline, the Solway coast. We've got Dumfries and Galloway in the background. And actually, as you've probably gathered by the title, no photography in today's video. I want to talk about what is in my bag. A um, couple of reasons. Firstly, and most importantly, I'm on holiday here with my family, staying in a wonderful cottage. So I don't want to spend hours out on a hike, you know. I'm with them, but I thought I could come out and quickly do some of here and sort of scout this coastline as well. What a spot. Secondly, I get so many questions from you guys um, asking me to do a what's in my bag video or of course just loads of individual questions asking for my opinion on gear and stuff like that so let's get into it <laughs> i suppose um so i've packed my bag i'd say like pretty much full as if i was going out on a big hike you know say if i was going to come down to the coast like this there's certain things i wouldn't bother bringing because i wouldn't need to you know but this is pretty much packed um, as if I was going on, say, like a day hike, you know? So it's the most amount of gear that I would take. The bag, you've probably noticed, a lot of you have asked about this actually, is um, pretty new, but uh, not new enough that I don't feel like I've formed an opinion on it now. I, when I get stuff, I don't like chatting about it straight away. Um, you know, I like to use it for a little bit first, then it's real world, you know? I can give you my honest opinion on it and stuff. So we'll talk about the bag last, but, Let's get into it. So all I'm going to do, literally, I haven't planned this or anything, just get gear out, put it to the side so I know I've spoken about it, and sort of move on, you know. So firstly, it's going to have to be the camera, isn't it? The Nikon Z7. I'll put a link up in the corner here if you want to hear me talk about this a little bit more in depth. Um, I only spoke, I've only had it for about a month, five or six weeks maybe. Um, so I won't go too much in depth here. Um, I absolutely love it. To be honest, ergonomically, it's not really that different from my previous camera, which was a Nikon D7200. So, in a way, it feels like I've not really changed camera system, you know, it, as, opposed if, as opposed to if I'd changed to sort of Sony and completely changed brands, you know, I'd really know about it, but it was quite an easy blend, <laughs> you know? A couple of the buttons are in different places, but apart from that, it's pretty same, same. Absolutely loving it, love, the sort of bells and whistles compared to the D7200, which I did adore, you know, it was great. Uh, but yeah, like things like live histogram, focus stacking in camera if I want to use it. Um, just all sorts, I love the electronic viewfinder. So I'm getting on well with it, you know. Um, first lens here is the 24 to 200, f4 to f6.3, so it's a variable aperture. I am gonna come out with a nice bold statement here. This is the best lens I've ever had. Now, when I say that, I don't mean it's the sharpest lens I've had, ever had necessarily. I mean, to be fair, it probably is. Because <laughs> uh, I've never had, you know, amazing lenses in the past. I've never had expensive lenses, f2.8s or anything really. Uh, not for my Nikon system anyway. I mean it really for the versatility. You know, I'm a landscape photographer. I go on so many big hikes. You know, the last thing I want is a load of lenses. And now, I've just got, like, like I spoke about in the Nikon Z7 video, just got this. This is my still setup now. Just two lenses. I'll get onto this one in a minute. Um, but yeah, 24 mil all the way up to 200. Wonderfully versatile. Um, it's more than sharp enough for what I need. I've not, I've not had any issues with the sharpness or image quality or anything. It's fantastic. But yeah, it's all about the versatility. So that's that. Or oh, the L bracket is from a, a brand called Small Rig, which I really do like actually. Um, and I, I said in the Z7 video, I've never had an L bracket fit a camera so well. It's absolutely perfect. So, loving it. I'll put this down here gently. Um, by the way, all of this gear that I talk about, if possible, will be in the video description below if you want to go and check it out a little bit more in depth. Um, so yeah, this is my wide angle lens to go with the Nikon Z7. Um, 14 to 30 mil f4 beast. I absolutely love it. Again, so, so beautifully sharp. Um, fantastic wide angle, you know. This is the widest angle I've ever had with any camera system, you know. Um, to be fair, I don't use it that, that often, but that's more a reflection of the type of photography that I do. You know, up on the fells, I tend to prefer the 24 to 200 range, but on the coast, somewhere like this, I'd no doubt be using my 14 to 30. Absolutely love it. So, that's it. I love it. Lovely 
set up, you know, nice and light, gives me everything that I need and more. Um, kind of in conjunction with that, this is my filter system from Nissi. Now, this is actually the first thing out of maybe two or three things here, two I think, um, that I've received for free from a company. I know I always want to be really transparent about that, uh, but I have spoken about these in the past anyway. Now, although I've received these from Nissi free of charge, I used Nissi years ago, before I even had this YouTube channel. It was the first filter brand that I personally invested in. So when they got in touch and said, do you want some Nissi filters for free? Um, you know, as long as you show them on your YouTube channel. Yes, I do. Um, these are class. Now, here's the thing, they're expensive. And I'm not here, especially on this kind of video, I'm not trying to get you to spend money. I'm not trying to encourage you. This is just purely, you know, I know a lot of you are interested in what I use day to day when I'm out with the camera. However, if you can afford it, invest in, you know, a really good brand like Nissi. Um, and uh, genuinely, I'm not trying to, it doesn't make a difference to me, to be honest, if you actually buy Nissi filters. Um, but I really mean that. If you can afford it, buy them. So I've got a six stop ND, 10 stop ND, 15 stop ND and a polarizer. That's it. For circular filters, don't bother with the square filters anymore. Uh, don't bother with ND grads, nothing against them. You know, I think it's great when people use them. I prefer just a bracket and then exposure blend in post. But yeah, if you can't afford filters that are, you know, quite expensive like this, um, and you're able to, try and get something like medium priced. What I'm trying to say is don't go out and buy an 800 pound lens and then get a filter off Amazon that's like a tenner because you've got to understand that's the first point of entry of light going into your lens. If you've got a cheap filter there, it's no good. So yeah, have a think about that. <laughs> um, these are just a, a few little step up rings or actually step down rings in one case for my lenses from a company called K&F Concept. Um, proper cheap off Amazon. Do not go out and buy, you know, two six stop ND filters at different sizes. Get the step up rings. Um, save yourself money right what have we got next i'll tell you what we've got some big ear guys these anyone rennies forget the camera forget everything forget the video camera which i'll go down to in a bit if you suffer with heartburn <laughs> no you get sponsored by rennie that'd be good wouldn't it um they're always in the bag like i said this isn't planned <laughs> i'm just pulling stuff out my bag we've got a microfiber cloth here um all jokes aside to be fair if I ever forget this and, you know, there's a bit of rain or moisture, I know about it. So, the, no joke, get a microfiber cloth in the bag. I'm going to have to put him under a rock. This is going to blow away. Elastic band. If you ever get your circular filters stuck, I find it happens quite a lot in winter. They get stuck and there's a tiny little, it's really difficult. It's so narrow to try and screw them off. It's a bit of a faff, but you can wrap the ele uh, electric band. You can wrap the elastic band <laughs> around the filter. Uh, yeah, it's a bit tricky, but then you get that grip to take it off. Uh, sat here, sat here on a windy evening talking about elastic bands. If that's not living the dream. <laughs> right, put him under there as well. This is a beast. Um, I'll get into more sort of photography gear in a minute, I promise. Um, this is a water filter. You wouldn't use it in the sea like, but in a, a river, you know, a beck, lake, town, whatever, um, the spout sort of goes in the river um, or whatever, and then you sort of <laughs> pump the water out. And obviously the idea is it filters the water so you get clean drinking water. Um, I, I actually really do recommend this. I think, again, it will all be in the description below, but I want to say it was about 40 quid worth its weight in gold. You know, as long as you, you know there's going to be a water source, of course, water source, of course, um, it's great because you don't have to lug a load of water up a mountain or something with you. Highly recommended. Not much else left, to be honest, guys. It does show you. I will, there's something I haven't got with me that I have to mention, and that's my jet boil. Um, absolutely love it. It's been, to be fair, a bit of a revelation going up mountains and actually taking the time to stop and having a little bit of hot food, particularly when you're on a big hike. Has to get a mention, but yeah, I haven't got him with me today. Um, Probably should have brought him, just to show you. Right, this is my GoPro Hero 8 Black. I was always, I never used to get GoPros, unless you were kind of underwater or something, of course. 
But I always just thought, what, what, what use, especially someone like me, what use am I going to get out of it? If you watch me back in the sort of lockdowns when I was going out on exercise, I bought this just to do them videos. So, you know, it was low profile. I wasn't going out with a load of cameras. Um, and I've absolutely loved it, to be honest. And I've started implementing quite a lot of GoPro footage into my videos. Um, I also bought as well, this is like, I don't really know what you call it, like a bite mount or something. This little thing on the bottom. Idea is, press record, stick the GoPro in your gob, it's actually really comfy, and then you get this kind of point of view shot, or you do, you know, of me. And you've probably seen it quite a lot, where I'm like grabbing my camera out the bag or putting my camera on a tripod. And all it is, stick the GoPro in the mouth and like, like that. It's really cool if you're into your videography and stuff like that. Uh, it's great that it's waterproof, if it's ever nailing it down and I don't want to use my proper video camera, this comes in handy. I've got this wind slayer thing on here as well. Uh, to be completely honest, it's not perfect, but I don't think it's really marketed as cutting out wind noise altogether if you want to use the microphone on the GoPro. It, I'm going to go for half decent, but at the same time, it is only a tenner. So, finally in this section of the bag, it seems, is the drone. This is an original, an original DJI Mavic Pro. <laughs> um, when, when did this come out? I want to say like four or five years ago now. It must have been ahead of its time, um, to be honest, because it still shoots 4K. Gives me everything that I need and more when I want to use it for videos, uh, or well, videography. It gives my video an extra dynamic. With that being said, I have to say this, I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with, with the drone. Um, I don't enjoy flying it, you know, the novelty wore off many years ago. <laughs> um, and I always worry that I'm that wally up the side of a mountain that's ruining everyone else's hype because like, flying a freaking drone around the place. But when I make the effort, when I take the effort to get it out and fly it, get a bit of video footage, I'm always delighted when I get it back home in the editing suite. Um, you know, really happy that I've made the effort. But yeah, no reason to upgrade to any of the newer DJI drones. Um, probably the only good thing would be that a lot of them now are a lot lighter, aren't they? A lot more sort of mobile, great for hikes. In this section, I've just got spare batteries. I must admit, I found myself needing one or two extra spare batteries, both for the Nikon Z7 and the Olympus, which I'll get onto in a minute, my video camera just because they're both mirrorless. And you know, of course, I'm comparing them to the battery life that I had on my DSLR. Very rarely use the live view that often on my Nikon D7200, so the battery life was mad. Honestly, it could have lasted for days. Now, with that being said, I don't really get the battery life thing that much. You know, of course, if I could have a better, a better battery life, I'd take it in a heartbeat, but just go out and buy a couple of extra batteries if you can afford it, like, chuck them in the bag. They're always there, aren't they? It's not the end of the world. Here I've just got a remote shutter. Uh, I need to get a smaller one actually. This was also an intravolometer that I used for time lapses on my D7200. The Z7 and the Olympus EM1 Mark II have both got that inbuilt. So it's redundant for that feature. However, my old Nikon remote shutter broke. So this is doing that job. I've also got a shower cap in here. Now this is not to put on my head if it starts raining. Uh, although I've never really thought of that. that you might see me in a video soon, guys. Up the side of the mountain with a shower cap on my head. No, if it's nailing it down, my Nikon Z7 is weatherproof, but if it's, you know, if it's proper going for it, I'll stick this on the top nice and easy. Robbed it from a hotel, living the dream. Popping back in there. All right, so I'm just gonna pop stuff back in here, guys. Give me a sec. Right, a couple of other things to mention. I did get these Montana, Montaigne, um, it's like uh, trail running waterproofs. Uh, probably quite expensive for what they are, to be fair. But, excuse me, but they just stuff right in the bottom of my bag. So I've always got waterproofs with me. And um, for the sort of stuff that I do, that, that yeah, that's really helped me out. Saved me a couple of times, you know. Um, this tripod, I have spoken about this in the past. I do absolutely love it. So this is my main stills tripod. It's an eye footage. They've always got mad names, haven't they? Gazelle TC6S. That's not actually that bad. What a name. Um, I love this. I love that it's only got three leg sections, so only two brackets. Nice and easy. Um, decent height. 
the center column screws out, which I absolutely love without having to mess with any of this section here, um, which is great if you want to get down low. You know, the legs flick out like this and then you can get right down low, quality. Um, it's got the bowl head on it as well. Not doing a very good job at showing you, is it? The bowl head is um, wonderful for panels. It means you don't have to faff around with your legs to get it nice and level. One thing here, I've got, you know, you might, one or two of you might notice this. I've got a different Manfrotto tripod ball head than what I used to use. The old one was good, but it was just proper heavy and I don't get it. You know, of course, as long as your ball head is strong enough to hold the weight of whatever your camera is, as far as I'm concerned, that's it. It's doing its job. So I was lugging up this, this other Manfrotto ball head, which was fine, but it was just so heavy. Um, so I swapped it to this one, which is a bit of a travel one. In, instantly saved myself like 300 grams worth of weight. Um, so, oh, there's one more thing I want to show you here. Look, this is a bit more of a proper waterproof cover for the camera. Um, again, link in the description below. These are pretty cool. So your lens comes out here where the hand is, and then you can put your hands in the side, the camera. Uh, it's got this see-through section here, so you can still see your live view and stuff. And yeah, a bit of extra protection. I use it for my video camera sometimes, actually, as well, when I still want to film in the rain. Right, a couple more things. I'm going to switch cameras around now because I want to show you my video camera and the setup. I guess that's one of the main things that you guys never get to see. So, one second. <laughs> so, just before we move on to the video camera stuff, I nearly went then, I nearly went then. don't know if anyone's seen that. Uh, let me just talk about this bag briefly. Um, this is the second thing, as well as the Nissi filters, that I have received for free. I actually got in touch with Mindshift and asked them if I could have one of the bags. Um, I said to them, I'm going to buy one anyway, to be honest. <laughs> um, but do you want to send me one for free? They were really friendly and they said yes. Very grateful for that. Um, however, I really want to stress this. They don't like send me stuff and then say, you need to make sure you tell your audience that it's good. I've never had a company do that. Um, on a bit of a side note, um, this is 100% like the best bag that I've had for, for landscape photography. It's, it's, I mean, I don't know why I wouldn't say that it's perfect, to be honest. There's nothing that jumps out at me. All right, I'm going to say this. There's one thing that, that jumps out at me that I don't like about, but I'm not going to talk about that just yet because it's a bit... In fact, yeah, I will. Let's start with the negative. All right, so clearly you can see here, it's, um, it's got the hip straps. Is that what they're called? Waist straps, hip straps. Round the pop, you clip it in, a lot more comfy. Um, this is removable, by the way, so this would eradicate this sort of problem. Honestly, this is a nothing. This is just so that I, I don't sound ridiculous by saying it's perfect, because it is perfect. Um, it's kind of annoying when you're trying to get gear out in a rush, because you've got to, you can zip it down here, yeah? And then once you get to here, you've got to lift the, the hip strap up so you can get a bit further down. So sometimes you're rushing and you're like, oh geez, what's going on? Get that open. And then you can open it fully. That's not a problem. What am I on about? But I'm gonna put it in there because like I said, I don't wanna say it's perfect. <laughs> um, nothing's perfect, is it? My previous mind shift bag, absolutely quality as well. That was the backlight 26 liters. This one is 45 liters. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I, I, may, I may make a vid, uh, video on this whole bag at some stage because it is quality. Loads of space for camera gear. Um, but one thing, uh, the, one of the main things that I, I wanted this bag for, loads of space for personal gear as well. You know, this section in the top, it's got two front sections where you can put jackets. Great for the jet boil. You know, I, in my previous bag, I always had to like choose between my drone or my jet boil or something. Uh, but yeah, pockets galore, two tripod pockets, which is fantastic for myself. I've always got two tripods, really comfortable straps. Um, definitely, definitely fantastic for hiking and big adventures. Um, and like I say, loads of personal space as well. There's a lot more to this bag. I'm just running through it quickly. Really nice water resistant. Um, it's made for like, it is made for adventure photographers, literally. But again, link below. Right, let's get on to the video gear. Is that on? Is that on? It's on. Guys, it's the next morning. <laughs> I'm not on an adventure. I'm at the beach with my flip-flops on. Ah, the file. I did this chat 
about my video camera last night and the file got corrupt. It wouldn't upload to my computer. And I've never had that happen before. Um, so yeah, it was really annoying. To be fair, it's probably good that it happened with that and not, you know, some mint photograph. But I really did want to talk about my video camera, which is what's filming me now. Because like I said in the video, I, I never really talk about it and you guys don't get to see it. Um, but it was brief. Um, and all that said really was that it's pretty much perfect. And the reasons that I got it were things like 4K, uncropped 4K shooting, um, image stabilization. The image stabilization is amazing on the Olympus um, for the video as well as the stills. Flip round screen, all these things that I wanted, um, it gives me. But I wanted to also talk about my video tripod which is a tripod that I've had for ages. It was actually the first stills tripod I ever bought and it's a Manfrotto compact action. And it's lasted me years. However, I want to now upgrade my video tripod. Um, and that's where yous come in. I wanted to ask for advice or for any suggestions for tripods. Um, now I'm not looking for a video tripod as such, you know, I don't want the fluid head and all that sort of stuff. It's a travel tripod that I want really. I want something really light. Um, Something that comes up to, you know, maybe my height, but something that also can go really low down for them low shots as well. If anyone's got any suggestions, maybe I'm thinking too much into it, but I just can't find the perfect tripod for my videos. But yeah, that's it. I just wanted to get this in there, or else it would have just been a bit weird not talking about my video camera. Um, but yeah, the Olympus EM1 Mark II, quality. Couple of little updates, because I know this has been quite a long video, but I was thinking about this, it means that anybody that cares <laughs> is probably still watching. So first and foremost, thank you. Um, update on Ireland, the Ireland trip, which is just over there actually, past the Isle of Man. Um, it's definitely still going ahead, um, first things first. You know, I haven't been out and blown the money on booze or anything like that. I just, like I said when I started it, um, I want to make sure it's right. It still doesn't feel like it's 100% right with COVID and stuff. Um, and I said at the time, I'm sure even if it's five years in the future, I don't mind. It's not going to be that long. Uh, but yeah, I just want to make sure it's right and I can book however long it's going to be and just feel comfortable with it. Um, and yeah, he's only next door, isn't he? So I don't have to rush. Um, but yeah, thanks again for, for that. And I have had a couple of emails on, about that trip and stuff, but it's still going ahead. Um, secondly, quite a lot of questions about my eye operation or whatever. Not had it yet. Um, I reckon maybe around Christmas, New Year time. Not 100% sure, but still feel great about it. You know, really positive. Uh, and that's something I've had a few questions on as well. So thank you. That's very caring. <laughs> uh, but anyway, a bit of a weird end to the video. Out on my morning walk on the beach with my flip-flops. But, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy these sort of videos. I do once in a blue moon. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you on the next adventure. Out.